Who was the last man to walk on the moon? Buzz. Well, Buzz was Buzz was there with with uh, Neil and I. Well, uh, who was the last one? Ah, the winner. Right, right. It went a, went a, uh, a, a luxury cruise, if you could answer this question. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't Alan Chase. No, no, he was, he was, he was the first and only man to hit a golf, golf ball on the moon. Yes. No, it was, it was Gene Cernan, C-E-R-N-A-N, and he was with Harrison Schmidt on Apollo 17. 1972, December 1972. Anyway, these are his footprints, and we're going to talk about it. Then. You know, that's one small step uh, for a man. Well, there's a lot of footprints on the moon. At least that's what they claim. <laughs> so we'll look at that as well. But uh, so I'm, I'm titling this just to get you thinking the many baby steps and some of the issues that we've run into. Just reflecting on what works, what doesn't work. I don't want to get real technical here t today. We're going to get into the technical part uh, uh, tomorrow. But uh, think about things, and, and this is. I'm just reflecting about these different different issues that we've come across, and we're going to look at them and, and be as transparent and, and candid as possible about what's going on. So, uh, Mike Boggs, who was uh, our director of, uh, of, of uh, accounting and for, for several years, talked about the failure to launch and. That I, we've seen in plenty of those, but there's actually a, another kind of failure, and uh, this is uh, this is a, a Falcon 9. Uh, you remember this SpaceX can land the, the boosters on a barge, and uh, this is this is one that didn't work. But that Elon Musk is always happy to to uh, to learn from this. Uh, I've seen the Falcon 9 launch three times now. I just haven't been to Florida when it goes. So the, the cool part is when we saw Falcon 9 heavy and two boosters coming down uh, by themselves. And uh, but but the, uh, the the main stage went went down range of barge and, and, and blew up. So but anyway, so failure to launch. We see a lot of that, unfortunately. And I would I would say. Uh, if we, if we were batting uh, 500 on successful users, I'd be pretty, pretty strong. There's also the failure to failure to land and, and be able to follow through. So let's let's look at that. So the, it's pretty easy to predict uh, who's going to fail. It's a little easier, to, it's a little more difficult to figure out who's going to succeed. But there's this culture of information accumulation. Randy, you know who, who coined that term? <coughs> Don Jillings. Oh, really? Don Jillings brought us together, and, and this is one that Don is, and it may not be original to him, but it, it describes an attitude and process of the farm that uh, you can say that, hey, they, they're they making this important. This is the case that your operation gets it. That this is important, and I'm, you know that being the condescending term, somebody who doesn't get it, but it's, but it's something we, we know that there. This is what's important. If you don't have it, it's it's going to be really hard to be successful uh, with our system or taking any 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 major steps. So you know, so thinking about what it looks like, how do you quantify it? Um, well. Um, we always say that they're, if they're using QuickBooks and 23 spreadsheets, they are they're very intentional and there's pretty good opportunity to, to succeed. So if, if there's, a, there's a, the quantity, that they're, they're collecting a lot of information, just probably as, as uh, uh, in Pat's uh, uh, filing cabinet, it's going back and forth, it's, it's not making a lot of sense, or they're, they're trying to do it. There's also the quality, and they put some SOPs together. And if you're going to replicate what you're doing, you better make it easy for people to understand, because it's, especially as we're taking all the different alternatives to for, 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 for tracking things, just it's, you end up, somebody new comes along, they dump everything in Journal Farm, or do 
something that's, that's that destroys the whole purpose. So the whole team's got to recognize the value, and that's that's something that uh, uh, I know, particularly in, in a die guys operation, just everybody's on board. And, 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 and Joe made a big transition when he stepped in and took that, that, that project by the horns and getting everybody, uh, any, everybody from uh, his sisters to uh, employees to, to, uh, to recognize that this is, this is worth accumulating and doing things right. And I think the interesting thing is, yeah, I've heard him say this many times, your vendors. If you want to do business with Dykeis Farms, you're going to provide us this information in this format, hopefully it's electronic, it's trying to get uh, uh, get everybody on board, including your suppliers and your, your, your uh, vendors. But again, you, you're welcome to interrupt me if you got any comments or, or challenge you, anything I say. So set up some bear. I'm going to admit that. That's, that's uh, we know that's the case, but there's reasons, and part of us, you pick out, we may have different data fields, the terminology, and we've done interfaces with the service, there's different terminology, what's a crop, what's a field, we have projects, what, how does this all line up? And so being able to take something that's, it may be a total new concept, or maybe something that's called something differently in another system, and just trying to, to harmonize that. Uh, the other thing is that mo most of the operations we work with are very complex, and so there's a lot of customization, really thinking through how you want to do it, what's your chart accounts, what's your centers, what's your, what's your business model, how that works together. And because we're, we're going beyond the physical, the operational, the production, we're looking at the actual financial and, 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 and looking at the different uh, business entities. Other thing is that the, the integration is, it's there, it's behind the scenes. Uh, tomorrow in our case study, we'll, we'll look at uh, what, what, what's happening with Eclipse and how that works. But the integration isn't, we're trying to make that as transparent and, and automated as possible. So we don't, you don't necessarily see what's going on. It's like a spreadsheet. You can go look, drill in the cell and see what the logic is. So you don't understand why this count has to has to be a, 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 a a crop sale account, what that what affects, uh, what integration types are, that's important to understand. It's uh, certainly easier to do it right the first time, but uh, what I've seen from the survey, uh, and, and I understand this, I like to dig in and, and, and at least get some value out of something until I hit my head. And, and uh, but then again, there's a there's a terrible price you pay by by plunging off and going in the wrong direction. And uh, I've had to, we've had to clean up some some systems that uh, had gone on for a couple of generations of of, uh, of uh, accounting staff. They really didn't understand the full value of FBS, and they were doing make, making things probably a lot harder, a lot more complex than they needed to be. Uh, the FBS is here to help. Uh, uh, I don't know, let's see Sarah in the, in the uh, she may be on the phone with somebody, but we're, we would much rather you call us. And Terry, you know, your emails and Audrey emails are very helpful because you know you're asking the right questions, you're digging into things. And that's 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 very helpful. Now, I mean, I'll be able to, certain times of year, maybe harder to, to respond quite as timely as you like, but uh, it's, uh, we're here to help you think through the big picture. Not you may not understand exactly where we're going, why we're, why we're but we're, we've done enough of these. We know how complex and how things work. And one of the uh, you know part of the issue is we're requiring more detail, so we're forcing you to come up with more decisions. Uh, with allocation, sometimes it actually makes it easier. You're not having to split things too far, but we're also helping you think through how do how do how does this transaction work? Uh, why do I need this? Be able to capture a little more information so I can use it later. Anybody have any horror stories or or lessons they've learned from set up? Good. I'll duck it. <laughs> Okay, the devil's in the details. Now, uh, here's, here's things I've learned the hard way. And I listen to what people say. Here's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. I want to do that. 
And, and because FBS can do that, let's set, set up the element system here, be able to split things out and, and, and uh, split out the uh, cost centers by, by landlord and, and do some things that are very, very detailed. Well, that's good if you got follow through. Remember, we got to be able to be able to, to land the thing as well as launch it. Uh, first question we ask you, are you already tracking this? Well, that's a pretty good indication that we can maybe help. But if you're not tracking, let's take fuel. You're not tracking fuel consumption by a piece of equipment or, 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 or drug inventories or things like that, then you know, you're, 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 you're adding a whole bunch of layer of complexity if you're, you're, you haven't built the systems in place and, and made, it, made it a priority. Uh, a critical issue is what's your smallest manageable unit? You can't manage manage that. Is that really worth gathering that information? Uh, really worthwhile? Is it uh, figure out what? Some, some operation just commodity level is is a big step, and that's and that's just assuming the direct costs. Getting the indirect costs to be able to do that by commodity becomes a lot more difficult if you're not going to manage the operations and, and the support pieces that go along with this. Um, another thing is, is inventories and double entry are unforgiving. The hardest thing we do, we ask you to do, is an inventory control. It's, uh, I'm not talking about, uh, let's say, double entry accounting or management accounting or anything like that, just inventory control. That is something when it isn't a matter of throwing a rock in the bin and seeing this is what I've got. It's you've got, you had to look at what you sold uh, and then tie it back to what you harvested and you know, work backwards and, and, and how, do you deal, do you, how do you deal with that? So, uh, and that's one of the reasons we asked the question, how often do you reconcile inventories? It's, it's uh, whether you're talking about animals or, 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 or seed corn or whatever it is, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be, uh, uh, you've got to be committed to, to reconciling. Whatever you do with them, I mean, you, can, you can journal them out or you can uh, globally apply them or do something, but half, something has to, has to happen to them because that affects, affects your cost, affects your, your, your balance sheet. Um, so, uh, too deep a dive, uh, that's, again, because you can, I'm going to get get in deeper, 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 and then, then you, and then what do you do to, to back out of that besides you've gone too far? Uh, another point, when I say go big or go home, is it, uh, uh, you say, well, now I'm, I'm going to take all my detail and I'm going to roll it into a very similar, uh, some homogenous uh, uh, centers and, and do away with detail. But what do you do with that, all, the, the, all the detail you've done before? I mean, also doing it the beginning of the year or something. You know, there's, there's, there's just a lot of thoughts on that. And, and remember, there's always opportunities for next season. So if you start figure out what's, your, what's a manageable uh, unit that you can look at, what's what's going to gain most uh, capabilities, what 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 your 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 uh, organization is able to accumulate, how you manage it. Uh, you can say let's 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 do uh, a, a center for all machinery, or if you use some type of general uh, allocation for that, all labor. And then maybe next year I want to do activity-based costing with by by sprayer, planter, and and, and, and uh, harvesting. Any any feedback, comments on the detail? And that's one of the things we're looking at in, in, the, in the file structure moving forward is what what was important to, to store, what's not important to store. What do you need to do better? You need to do a better job of storing and, re, and reporting on. Okay, so I love that uh, pyramid that uh, Pat showed the trusted uh, the trusted advisor. Uh, and who's where we fit on this? And, and who are you trusted advisors? That's that's vital. I think that's if you think about uh, uh, some of the 
I'll, I'll quote these as there's some positive and negatives about this. Yeah, what's your scope of knowledge and competency? Uh, I see egg product salesmen are kind of in the middle. That's that's really surprising, surprising me. But uh, uh, the coffee shop, of course, uh, Twitterverse. That's there's a lot of good stuff that comes through there that uh, we can think about. Extension service. I don't want to pick on them, but uh, they, 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 in some respects, the, especially the folks who are in the Farm Financial Standards Council are, are they, they get it, they understand it. But oftentimes, uh, it's it come to the lowest common denominator suggestion, and that's not not terribly helpful. You know, one of our new clients, large client, um, they they're running full accrual in FBS, but be able to get things back into a cash basis, so their their farm management uh, accountant or, or farm management advisor. Uh, Fieldman can use that information at benchmark. It's kind of a reverse engineering their, their data. Uh, so professionals, yeah, that's that's good if they're, they understand agriculture. And then there's the hotshot geeks, the uh, the PhDs from us from uh, Silicon Valley who's, who are getting into the real. Uh, learning about agriculture and, and, and real expert on that. That's, that's real reality, that's what we're seeing right now. Um, so I, I say that a, a good basis would be uh, broad ag knowledge, knows where to turn. It's got a network, be able to, to, uh, to uh, point to somebody else. It doesn't take me long to get above my level of competency, but I know a lot of people who, who are really sharp and, and various fields and, and, and get the raw picture. The kind of thing we learned this morning about where the world is headed and all, all these 250 different uh, technologies out there. I and mean, it boggles your mind. So let's take up some trusted sources. Um, Farm Financial Standards Council um, is a uh, been around since 1990, and uh, they, they, tr the original goal was to uh, uh, try to define that uh, gap in the agricultural terms, and, and and then dealing with situations that the reality of American agriculture is most most uh, producers were were uh, uh, managing by by uh, cash and reporting by accrual, or most of them were actually just just, just cash. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll point out the, the solution on that. But uh, it, again, they published two, three documents uh, on financial standards, uh, man management accounting standards, and uh, an implementation guide. And uh, it's a good place to start because they spent a lot of time in meetings discussing how to, how to, how to resolve issues. Uh, uh, Daryl. Total unit cost in, at, at uh, Las Vegas. Right? They're, they're debating on that, and that's interesting. Now, so they explored every nook and cranny. You know, how do you, how do you reconcile capital uh, uh, depreciation? Is that going to is that a, is that a flowing through the income statement or is it an investment kind of situation? You know, there's there's a whole bunch of issues, and I, I, I think it's it's. It's fun, especially as you try to see how other people have solved another other advice. This is the implementation guide; it's free you can download it. It's the idea is to try to figure out where you where you stand right now. What are you? Is your valuation the market or market or selected cost, both market and cost, or uh, and, and our, what's your system? Is it pool adjusted or 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 a month? Uh, monthly accrual adjustments and figure out what, where you fit on this uh, continuum. Uh, this is a useful document, but it, it won't really, if you don't have an accounting background, it'll get you thinking. Appreciate it. Probably most people aren't going to follow through and, and, and use it but, uh, without, without some help. So the, the other trusted source I would recommend is, uh, is the is the uh, American Society of Agriculture Consultants. And we have the president of the American Society of Agriculture Consultants sitting in the back. Who uh, is Mr. Russell? Mo Russell. President. He's doing a great job. He's, he's really stirring things up. Are you the past president? Well, I'm, I'm one of the many, 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 many.
any past president. So, but, uh, so this is this is a network. It really is a very powerful uh, uh, system because it's so so diverse. Uh, you got, you got a few agronomic, you got marketing consultants, you got financial consultants, you have uh, there's a uh, a uh, human resource consultant, uh, people who work maybe some of the same clients. Again, there's professional standards and, and going beyond beyond what the typical uh, uh, accountant or, or or some other professional and. So I, I recommend that as a, as a resource. Again, there's websites for both of these, uh, Farm Financial Standards Council and agconsultants.org. So search for a consultant and see what, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get, I'll get referrals and, and this is a great organization. So this is one of the, one of the uh, frustrations I've had is that uh, uh, when all you have a, is a hammer, everything looks like a, Nail. So you got the world's best something or other, and it's going to be this going to be the solution. And there's there's many best in breed apps. I mean that's great if it's out there, but you use them incorrectly or use them for things they're not designed to do. Uh, I believe this is true. Most of our R&Ds going into production operations and data mining software relies on unreconciled dollars. So it's certainly going to this, and if they're not going to accounting, it's unreconciled dollars. At least they're using, taking terms of dollars. And there's, there's exciting to see all this development. But then you try to, try to match it up with big bucket accounting. That's what I call a system that can keep track of dollars, but not much else, no meaningful units. And that, it, it's, fine for, for tax returns, but it's not adequate for ag management account. So a lot of questions we have to, to come up with, where do the dollars reside? How are the dollars created? What, uh, what, uh, how, how can you trace back the dollars? Uh, units, we're, we're, we, we like pulling units from conservists and from, from ag leader and other, other sources. But the as applied, yeah, it gives a good starting point. But we want to, we're very jealous about the ones, we're the ones that value the inventory because if you're off, if you're off by five cents in a, in a, uh, in a production system, that's, that's not material, but if you're off five seconds, five cents in an accounting system, it's going to drive you crazy trying to find, get things to balance, get the transition to balance. So we're, we're very, think the, the dollars have to be created and, somehow reside and, and be tied out with the, the counting and we want to be able to create those dollars. If, if they go in another direction, that's fine, but we want to make sure those dollars are right. And so, uh, again, if, under this scenario, you're saying I've got two or three best in breed programs and there's some good best in breed programs, and you're saying the reconciliation and analysis is going to be a do-it-yourself project. If, if, if it's important to reconcile and analyze. Okay, so uh, I think we've even heard the term about silos. USDA, all of the departments, uh, uh, I heard a presentation several years ago, the USDA reps talks about USDA's silos of excellence. So every every department has its own data silo, and there's they were they're separated from one another, and they they, they made it as a joke. But uh, it's it's definitely not unique in agriculture. That's the reason bringing off the ERPs because uh, uh, most companies don't uh, don't uh, have to try to combine things. Now we've identified ten different conflicting information goals in uh, in uh, in agriculture. And there, there may not be a priority for everybody. Uh, maybe we can apply, but uh, they, they are there. So it's a cash and accrual, and cash is king in, 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 in agriculture. Cash basis tax returns, accrual, which of course you know there's totally different timings and hot when you with each each uh, preparing each method. 
maybe in management, which you, you aren't going to be reporting to the externally, it's it's running your it's showing you what's going on internally in your operation. The market value, which is uh, which is uh, also important uh, for for doing a. Uh, fair market value of financial statements. And then again, into ownership. Boy, that ownership it gets really, really complex from a, from a crop share situation to a bunch of different entities doing consolidated reporting. Uh, and those of you in, uh, who, who have a production, have, have a uh, representative farming operation, could you hold up your hand if you, if you have more than one hand, business entity within your operation? Just get a sense. Yeah. Now, I, I would guess that probably doesn't apply across board angles, but it does at our user base because of the, the complexity. And that, that, in some respects, you get, you, you're able to identify and isolate what the costs and returns are. On the other hand, you're creating a lot of extra transactions and, and, and complexity in, in reporting. So that's, a, that's really important. Then we get into operations production, and where those are the same one, the same item, it uh, could be the may, may or may not be uh, be the same thing, but they're they're dealing with some of the same issues, in planning and budgeting, and then benchmarks. And John will be and Mo will be talking about benchmarks here the next next session. So all of these are using the same information, just looking at the different views. And, uh, and of course, uh, the inventory controls being the, the other thing is, is, is critical. All this has got to be happening, and inventories are associated with, with uh, accounting and production. So the old model, the way to do this, was to manage by cash and report by accrual. So you had your cash tax return. This is the brilliance of uh, a couple years ago. We had Danny Kleinfelder uh, was our keynote speaker, and Danny and, and, and Tom Fry developed coordinated financial statements that eventually morphed into the Farm Financial Standards and APRA. And that whole goal was to be able to take somebody's uh, uh, cash basis tax returns and, and some some periodic inventories and convert that into an accrual statement. And that would only work once a year. And you wouldn't necessarily, it was better than nothing, but it wouldn't necessarily tell you what was going on in the operation. Well, we made a decision uh, many years ago, we were gonna go with the managed by accrual report by cash route. And that's, for those of you using management accounting, accrual accounting, you'll be able to do real-time adjustments and looking at cost adjustments rather than revenue adjustments which is what, what you use in the, in the old model. And then and then the, the ultimate of what we're talking about is ERP. We, we were doing ERP in a, in a in ERP light for, for a number of years and we see that as the is it's the current buzzword in in, in nature. And that's what Masa is is potentially focusing on. This is what our end result. This is our at the at the end of the day. So here here's one of the real ironies. You talk to somebody, what's the cost of in in inadequate cost account? Well, can you tell me? Tell me. Well, what's it cost you not to have? Well, I, I'm sure it doesn't cost you very much. But how do you know that? Well, it's there's no way to measure. One of the points that I think you'll note, you'll note on the, on the uh, benchmarks is, is at least we recognize there is a magnitude of opportunities. Now whether that's your opportunity, where you fit in that is another issue. But there, if there's $100 an acre difference, for example, there's a magnitude so there's a magnitude of making improvements. Now, what what contributes to that 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 hundred dollars an acre? If it's not direct costs, then it's you know understand what what horse machinery or labor or whatever that is. Of course, you don't have to have all the records. You can just assume I'm always going to be in the top ten percent. I do benchmarks. I got to be I got to be there. Yeah, I know we're doing that. So so that gives you some validation. Uh, now, one of the things we know, if it's direct costs, you still need to be able to drill down to explain that. How did you get to that? Either was that evenly, was, how was that distributed across your fields, or how was it, uh, 
uh, what, what's a normal direct cost? Am I, am I, am I validated those numbers are correct? Because indirect cost, uh, that's again, that's where we think the opportunities are in, in operations. Understand how, how efficient your operation is. Do you have enough uh, production base? Can you adjust your, your uh, in source or outsource uh, uh, some of the, your, your activities and, and drive down costs? And what are, you know, what, what are, what's actually going on? And another thing to think about is that most of your time is spent in planning and managing activities, not products. Think about that. If you're really product related, certainly marketing, purchasing genetics, and somebody's doing some agronomic work and looking at looking at a particular uh, scouting the field. But the rest of it is writing equipment or doing doing uh, some type of uh, some type of an activity uh, rather than looking focusing down on the on the on that product itself. Well, this, uh, how, how many of you read this book? Measure, really, okay, there's, there's a couple of them. So it's, and everybody can glean a little different things out of it, but it's John Doerr, and it starts with, uh, it's, this goes back uh, a long ways. The sample he uses is with Andy Grove and, and Intel, but, uh, Using uh, uh, objectives and key results, the, the objectives being what, to, what are we trying to achieve, what's the big, big picture we're trying to achieve, and then the key results, how we, how we get to the objective. It's, it's more than management by objective. It's a matter of coordinating the, the whole enterprise. And, and it's aligned and connected for teamwork, uh, <coughs> track for accountability, uh, focus on, on priorities, and, and a lot of this is, we think it's, our approach is, it will correlate with that transparent, continuous, doing bottom line analysis, be able to do continuous improvement. All this is going to be uh, applicable to what we're doing. And it's not only in a in farming operation, at your operation, but in, in MASA, too, is, is be able to track what it is we're trying to trying to accomplish. I, it's a little bit harder to measure progress on on an accounting development it is how many acres you got uh, planted today. But uh, we think this is uh, always looking for 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 uh, for uh, business books that have have some uh, some application in, in whatever field I'm in. So this is uh, this is one of my conclusions, and, I, and and if you want to fight me over it, you can do that. But I think unlike inputs, uh, uh, knowledge has economies of scale. You think about that. Inputs, yeah, you can you can do a volume purchase, uh, and of course you can aggregate d data, be able to get a volume that way with other operations. Uh, most of most of the strategies have been around production technology. Well, many, many years ago, um, I was visiting with the uh, University of Illinois, Steve Stonka, who was an uh, ag economist, and he, he started talking about the information age farm, and that was back in the 80s. And he said there's two qualifications for that. There's specialization, and you get family members and, and tasks associated, somebody's marketing, somebody's somebody's crops, somebody's livestock, whatever that, what that is. And they bring in outside advisors. So there's certainly advantages of, of having that specialization and bringing in outside advisors that a small operation doesn't have, or they either have the, the internal expertise. What, uh, what I see with Moss and strategy is to scale down. What we're trying to do is develop the ultimate optimal uh, general ledger accounting platform that will satisfy the, the, the most robust needs of our, our users. Well, guess what? If you don't need all that, that can be fit switch, features can be turned off and can be scaled down to fits in any operation. You know you'll, you'll never outgrow that. The alternative
property that's developed from the ground up and say, this is, gee, this is what 80% of the of farming operations will be happy with, but what about the other 20% larger? So we're, we're, we're just taking things, we're trying to take the worst case scenario, think through that, and then be able to, to scale it to down to the uh, smaller operations and, and, and get, become an established a standard. So part of the, the economies of, of scale is the ability to get away, have a shared knowledge at a conference like this. That's something that uh, somebody who's, who's, who's wearing a lot of hats can't get away, can't do. Also see the new tools on the horizon, and that's, uh, that's thank uh, uh, Pat and Chris for giving some ideas of what, what's coming on. on. And, uh, and and keeping track of all of you can leave your mark. Now, what's what's one of the uh, hoaxes that uh, that people play or perpetrate in America? They're landed. Okay, so here I get this. Get this is a is a lunar orbiter uh, shot of if this get of all the tracks that the, and the debris that were left by the this is Apollo 17. Unfortunately, I don't know the focus is not good. I don't know why. Do you see the see all the different uh, experiments and tra foot footprints, uh, <coughs> rover tracks, and uh, those will be there for millions of years. So they've left, they've left their mark. You know when nothing's going to fall away. So that's again. That's we're going to leave those kind of footsteps for the next generation, and they may not uh, may not uh, appreciate everything we've done, and they may not see much. We're making much progress at the time, but uh, this has still have lasting benefit. So I'm just going to go to another. Uh, Go in another uh, video, which uh, I think we need to do that. So, anyway, that's the, that's the uh, that's the sharing some of my experiences, and and hopefully you can apply some of these things on a very generic sense.